Hello Linux fans and welcome to Linux Quest. Well, I thought I would do a video that shows my setup procedure for a fresh install using the KDE desktop. Uh, before I get into this, I hope everyone's weekend is kicking off well. And I just will let you know that I just made a switch this morning from Linux Mint KDE over to Interagos KDE. And the reason is I'm going to stay... Um, on the Plasma desktop for a while, and Linux Mint is going to do away with their spin of the KDE desktop. With Interagos, you're going to get the latest and greatest. You've also got KDE Neon, Kubuntu, and a few other distributions out there. They're going to give you a very updated uh, Plasma desktop environment. Now, I hope this video will be kind of fun. It'll give you some insight as to what I do when I, you know, a fresh install and and go through and set up some of the basics. I'm not going to go into all the details. Uh, within Plasma Desktop because that would be a 10 or 12 hour long video. Um, I highly recommend if you're wanting to kind of get into all of the settings, which I've got a few videos on various settings and we'll be doing more, but check out uh, the Big Daddy channel, Big Daddy Linux, Rocco uh, on YouTube. He's probably got 20 or 25 hours on all the various settings. And again, I'll be adding to my video collection as well with more settings with the frequent updated uh, KDE Plasma. All right, so let's jump into it. So here we are, fresh install. The only thing I've really done, I installed two pieces of software, uh, one for primarily doing the video recording, which is VocoScreen. Um, all right, let's jump into the very first things, and, and kind of some of this will be personal preference. Some of this will be, hey, this is just the way I do it, and I do it now with any, you know, without even thinking about it. I go through so many distros in a year and do so much hopping. Some of these things are just immediate. You know, it's uh, it's like second nature almost. Um, and then other things are just personal preference. We all have, you know, things in a certain area and a certain look that we like. And hey, that's what makes part of what makes uh, Linux operating system so awesome. All right. So the very first thing, and this is not exactly specific to the KDE desktop, but it's something that's important upon fresh install, and that's to go in and check for any updates. And you'll see here that we've got an update in place. Now, this is usually not something you'll see uh, with Interagos because it's doing updates uh, during the install. You have to actually be connected uh, and it's doing those updates, but it's always, I think, good practice to do that. Now, once this update finishes, I'll get into some other things. Um, well, it's doing it already for me, but if you didn't have an update, and that is to refresh the community files. It's going to actually refresh your packages. It's going to go out and look for any updates to some of the software that's in the repository. And you'd simply go up under settings and click refresh database. Now, if you're using another distribution, uh, these settings may be in a different location. One of the other things that I will always do is I turn off the tray icon, not completely, but I choose the option here to hide the tray icon when no updates are available. Uh, it's just one way to keep this from getting too cluttered with things. And then the other thing that I'll often do is bump this up from you know the settings sometimes these settings are uh, you know every three hours uh, I don't see a reason to need to check for updates every three hours so typically I'll bump that up to say 10 or 12 hours all right so we'll go ahead and close that out and you'll see now that it's just kind of doing uh, a, a check for updates refresh and you'll notice now that the icon went away sometimes that may not go away until you do a reboot all right, so moving on from there, another thing that I will do, I don't really have any Bluetooth peripherals that I use uh, with this system, so I'm going to go in and just toggle that off because I have no use for it, and you'll see that that icon then goes away. Something else that I'll typically do is you've got your clock here, and I believe you'll find on most, most um, systems at install, this is going to be set to 24-hour mode. So I'll go in to right click, go to digital clock settings, and we'll just go ahead and toggle that off. And you'll notice once we hit apply, that an AM is going to pop up and that'll tell you now you're in 12 hour mode. And then sometimes I'll add the date. Not always, but sometimes I'll add 
update and you'll see that pop up there. Now there's lots of other settings that you could get into here again and but again but save that for another video perhaps. All right, so moving on from there, if you check out this desktop, you'll notice on most current KDE installs, KDE desktop applied installs, whether that's, you know, on top of Ubuntu or whatever your distribution of choice is, you'll see some folders. That's because now it defaults to folder view. Now, me personally, I like to keep a clean desktop. I don't use shortcuts or folders, and so there's a couple of options here. Number one, you could right click and go to configure desktop. So when you do that, the first option you see here is layout, and that's, you know, again, folder view. So your other option is called desktop. So what desktop is, is basically it's non live desktop. You're not, you know, adding folders and shortcuts and all that. Or if you don't want to go that route, and I'm not going to change it for the video simply because uh, sometimes you have to do a log out, log in. It, you know, the screen could go blank, that kind of thing. You just don't want to do that while we're filming. So your other option is you could right click and delete, or actually in this case, move to trash. We'll talk more about delete here in just a sec. So we're going to go ahead and move that to trash to show you. Uh, I'll go ahead and empty that. But if you wanted to uh, delete this folder, I believe you have to actually do that from root actions because the trash is like a system folder or whatever so you have to actually do that from root it'll ask for a password so that's your other option um, so I'll usually change that the other thing that I will do is I will change the application launcher now this is gonna vary this is pretty much the default I think this is what KDE prefers you know as their default but you've got options by right clicking on the application launcher and choosing alternatives now in the case of Intergos you're only gonna see two options here my preference is application menu so I always switch to that so we'll go ahead and make that switch. Uh, but in other distributions, you may see three or four options there, and you can just simply experiment and find out what works for you. All right, so now we're going to move over into some other areas here. And again, this is all personal preference, but this is just what I do. Um, you can go into edit mode for the panel, your panel here at the bottom. And I just, let me interject here too. If you're someone maybe new to KDE or new to Linux, and you're kind of exploring um, KDE to see if it's maybe a fit for you or something you'd be interested in trying. Hopefully these settings as I go through and make the changes that I normally use would be helpful to you to to maybe discover some things you didn't know about and, and maybe help you with that decision. Or that's my hope anyway. So we're going to go back into edit mode. Um, and from edit mode you, you get into lots of options here but one of the things I always do uh, again without even thinking about it is I add a spacer. Now that spacer may pop up uh, over here on the right, it may pop up on the left, it just depends on the way things are set up within your system by default. And I'm going to take that spacer and I'm going to slide that over to the left and put it in there and I'll talk more about the reasons why. So anytime you have uh, something minimized, it's going to be over to the left unless you have that spacer in place. And I happen to like shortcuts there. So we're going to go ahead and plop that there. Now the other thing you can do while you're here, maybe you like your panel at the top or maybe you like it to the right or to the left. You can simply drag it where you like it. Um, I've been running with the panel at the bottom uh, for a while now. Sometimes I'll go back up to the top and, and kind of get used to it there as well. The other thing you could do is you could adjust the height. Uh, maybe you're vision impaired. And if you adjust that height up like this, you'll notice that the clock and everything um, gets larger and also your icons on the bottom would be larger and so that may may help you visually uh, but we'll go ahead and take that back down uh, shrink it back down alright so got that all done then the other thing that I will do upon first setup is I go in and add my favorite applications to the panel down here so we're going to go into system and we'll add console and we'll right click on that and choose add to panel now it may pop up over here, it may pop up here, it just depends again on the way things are set up by default with your OS, but you'll see it, it move there. And before I go adjusting that, I'm just going to go ahead and put a few other things in. Um, I had installed, I did install the Opera browser, that's not default, uh, but I did install that. That's, so we'll go ahead and add that to the panel, you'll see that there. 
And let's see here, what else? We'll go into utilities. We'll add a screen clip here with spectacle. And let's go ahead and feel like Bob Ross here. Let's go ahead and put a happy calculator on our panel. Uh, let's see here, we'll add the calculator. All right, so now we've got those in place and I like to have those over to the left. So we'll make another adjustment. And again, you could go here or you could right click on the panel and get to the same area by scrolling over to panel settings. Either one of those will get you there. And now that I've got these in place, I'm going to move them over uh, to the other side of that spacer that we put earlier. So we get those all there. And then once that's set, one other thing I want to do, let's go ahead, I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and we'll toggle this off uh, for now because one of the other things that I'll do is I like to have my minimized apps over in this area from about center over. Um, you know, you may be someone who likes them over here on the far left and maybe you want your icons in the center. So kind of what I'm illustrating to you here is that with spacers and just sliding things around, you can really configure this um, in so many ways to see what works best for you. Uh, but that spacer here, right now it's set to auto adjust. So depending on how many minimized apps I have lined up here, this may shrink or grow. But we're going to change that. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to this space and right click and you'll see set flexible size. So that's what it's set to by default. We're going to toggle that off and now you'll see that moved over. And then we'll go back into uh, panel edit mode and hover over that spacer and now you're going to see some options uh, to move that or to adjust that size and when we do that now you'll see that minimized app it's going to slide over and once you get it set just left click off and I probably would adjust that over even more so we're going to go back in to uh, panel edit mode and just move that over a little more and we'll leave it there. Now if you add um, additional icons here to the panel that'll kind of keep shifting over as you go because now the spacer is going to move but it's going to stay the same size. So that's kind of what I do again just immediately to get things where you know where I'm comfortable. Alright so some other settings we will go back into configure desktop and one of the other things that I always do is change my wallpaper. Now I've got a group of wallpapers that I cycle through. A lot of them are from a friend in the uh, community, Carl Snyder. So if you do a Google search for Carl Snyder, Carl with a K, um, you'll find some of his original wallpapers. And I really like his work. He's, he's done some awesome things there. And so you can check that out. But... You've got lots of options here within Plasma to, you know, you could add your own image, you could get new wallpapers. So, you know, but at any rate, I'm not going to go through all the details again, but I'll change the wallpaper up to something that I like. So just to, to illustrate. And then one of the other things I always do is I turn off this tool here. Um, it's called the Desktop Toolbox. And that's because you can get a lot of these options uh, through the right click menu as well and so I simply really don't need it and um, you know it's just one of those little pet peeves of mine so I'll go ahead and turn that off you'll see that has disappeared and moving on from there um, let's get into one of the I think top features for KDE and that is the Dolphin File Manager I always jump into this and there's a couple of things that for me are just a must. One is typically you're going to see the folder size about where it is now. I adjust that up and again this is an excellent um, adjustment feature if you're vision impaired. You can adjust the font size as well as the folder size. Uh, so we're going to get that to a, a space where I, I kind of keep it. And then the other thing that is always something that I'll adjust is uh, go into control, go into configure Dolphin, then go to services and here you're going to find lots of options. Uh, depending on your distribution some things that you see in this list will be on or off um, but I always turn on delete and now 
when you right click, you've got the option to go straight to delete as opposed to just move to trash. Otherwise, you'd have to go into root actions and choose delete and then enter in your password. So it's a few extra steps. So we've got that all in place. And that, for the most part, in a nutshell, with the exception of one more thing, which I think may be controversial for some of you, but I don't have a problem with it. But, uh, but that's pretty much, in a nutshell, the first bam, jump in, not even thinking about it, immediately going to happen things for setting up Plasma Desktop. The final thing that I'll do is I will turn off KDE Wallet. And the KDE Wallet uh, Manager is something that... Okay, so it's not enabled, so maybe I turned that off before I did the video. Um, let's go ahead and go to configure, and I'll show you where it's. Okay, so it says it's enabled. Anyway, this is something that I'll turn off, and this is something that helps you on the security side. It's, you know, it works with your, um, say, browser. Uh, and other parts of the operating system, you'll get a pop-up from KDE Wallet asking for your password. Um, you know, turn that off at your own risk. That's just something that I always do. So, well, I think that covers everything um, that I wanted to just share with you. Hopefully this has been fun, but also hopefully it has been um, informative. Maybe, you know, you're that one person who um, just is now getting into Linux operating systems and you really haven't taken the time to uh, to see what all KDE is about, then, then hopefully this is something that's been helpful for you. All right, well, I hope everyone has a great rest of the weekend, and we will check you later.